four ordinary guys with extraordinary ideas for Disney parks. This is Main Street Musings. The experimental podcast of tomorrow. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to Main Street Musings, the experimental podcast of tomorrow. Okay. Joining me today are the Great Dane of the podcast, Eric. Hello. <laughs> the Dachshund of the podcast, Tanner. Hi there. And Jake, who's just a cat. <laughs> hey there. Hi there. Hello oh there. <laughs> And I'm Brock. Uh, if you didn't notice, our friend Eric is feeling a little bit hoarse today. Um, like Horace Horse Collar, Brock? <laughs> I wish it was Horace Horse Collar, Jake. <laughs> I really shouldn't have went in that, like, actually physically hurt my body. <laughs> I was surprised you did it. And then I saw the look of pain on your face. <laughs> Um, so, Eric, how about in great detail you describe what's ailing you <laughs> today? <laughs> Laryngitis. <laughs> okay, thanks. That's all we needed. <laughs> now that all of our listeners have a nice shiver down their spine as you whispered that. In yeah. A- we, we need to do an ASMR episode <laughs> someday. <laughs> Every episode it's of all this the kids podcast are doing it. is ASMR with our <laughs> soothing voices. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not sure if anyone could tell from the intro. I did the best I could. Uh, We're doing 101 Dalmatians today, another dog movie. Presumably you already knew that because you read the title. What's that? I don't think anybody could tell because you listed off every dog breed that wasn't a Dalmatian. I was trying to do like a... I realized that... (laughs) The cat, it doesn't work unless I like preface, like these are dog types, and then the cat would be the joke. But if I'm not, I didn't preface it. Anyway, we're talking about Oliver and company. (laughs) That would actually make more sense with my intro. Yeah, I kind of would have. Brock just didn't want to call me the Pongo. That's one of the only like three Disney movies I have not seen. I think it's that, Fox and the Hound. And maybe that's it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe that's it. My favorite third Disney movie Brock hasn't seen. <laughs> Do you mean of the classic animated movies? Because I know you haven't seen the computer that wore tennis shoes. No, of or... the animated films. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> When's that episode coming up? Soon. 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 So anyway, did we explain why we're doing a 101 Dalmatians episode? Has that been stated? Nope. Well, if anyone is... The reason we're doing 101 Dalmatians episode is because on the day we are recording, the new Cruella movie is coming out. Woo-hoo. We're trying to have some synergy and tie in with what is currently happening. Yeah, so maybe Disney Plus um, will give us some money. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. This movie so. looks stupid in every possible way. Ever since I've seen the first trailer, I am so jazzed about seeing this movie. I don't know why. I'm super excited about it, but I know it's. I it looks terrible. <laughs> Brock, is there a Disney corporate sponsor in your room with you right now? I wish there <laughs> were, because at least it would make sense. <laughs> at least I would understand why. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious. I'll definitely see it. I'm I'm curious about it. Curious. Yeah. Brock said excited. <laughs> it hasn't been I able am. to stop thinking about it. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> All right, on that note, who is pitching their 101 Dalmatians idea first today? I think instead of Eric picking, I think we're going to have Tanner pick yes. today. Is that right? Yes, I All am. Right. And for your obedience of letting me pick, Jake, I'm rewarding you with being the first one to go. Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. I, whether you were mad at me or claiming to be happy with me, somehow I was going to be the one going first. <laughs> so my idea is a classic dark ride, um, the theme of which would be that the puppies have already been puppy napped, uh, as ha- what happens in the movie. 
and we kind of go through the queue line and we're seeing old TVs everywhere and they're playing, maybe they're playing the K9 Crunchies commercial from the movie and they're also playing some news clips. Um, they're, we're seeing maybe some of the uh, What's Your Crime segment and just funny stuff like that on these old black and white TVs. But also these news segments are showing detailings of the puppies being kidnapped. And we end up being joined by the uh, the cat who, oh, I forget the character's name. Uh, is it Admiral? Sergeant. Sergeant. Sergeant Tibbs. I, I knew it was Tibbs. Uh, Sergeant Tibbs, who explains to us that, hey, we think the puppies are in Hell Hall. We need to go help them escape. We board our ride vehicles, and then we go on this adventure of rescuing the puppies and being chased by Cruella DeVille and uh, Jasper and Horace and eventually making our way to safety. That is my pitch in a nutshell. All right. Very cool. Thanks, Jake. Let's pass it over to the man of many voices, but today he has one scary, <laughs> decrepit voice, and that's Eric Hand. No, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it uh, short and sweet today. Uh, my idea is a, uh, a full park overlay done during magic hours uh, for kids from underprivileged uh, school systems. Uh, the whole thing would be sponsored to help them get more money uh, flowing to them. And they would go on, like, a treasure hunt. They would be giving clues and stuff uh, to find, like, X amount of the 101 Dalmatians, which have been lost all gotcha. over the park. Um, nice. I was could... waiting for the Dalmatians to get worked in. I was <laughs> yeah. like, any minute now, there's going to be Dalmatians. Yeah. <laughs> They're going on a treasure hunt uh, to get Cruella de Vil some money. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it uh, inspired a lot by the, the video game Kingdom Hearts, where you find all 101 Dalmatians throughout the game. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so you would find them and then be rewarded. Uh, nice. At the end. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. We won't make you describe it in any more detail <laughs> just yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like I am up. So for my pitch today, we're going to go back in time to a time where downtown Disney was a little different. There was an area called Pleasure <laughs> Island, and it was full of dance clubs that were so weirdly themed. <laughs> Like mannequins. <laughs> mannequins. The dance club mm -hmm. in an old mannequin factory. Uh, <laughs> so I want to bring dance clubs back to downtown Disney, Disney Springs. Uh, the idea is for a new dance club called Cruella's, and it's going to be full of glitz and glamour. It's going to be very 1950s inspired, the time period of the movie. Uh, I have a lot of different fun ideas. I think it'd be cool to make all the employees wear, like, uh, black and white wigs of different styles so everyone just <laughs> nice. everyone looks like they're like very into high fashion uh we're gonna have a replica of cruella's car in there and it's gonna and also the one big thing that i thought would be really fun is in uh tokyo disney sea their tower of terror has the harrison high tower story uh and basically there are all these pictures of him being horrible uh, stealing all of these uh, artifacts and I thought it'd be cool to have yeah. a bunch of different like portraits of Cruella de Vil like tongue in cheek being <laughs> horrible and all of these different scenarios being on all of the walls so we're keeping it still nice. Disneyfied but it's going to be something for the locals and adults that are going down to Orlando to enjoy while they're at Disney World boom <laughs> nice thank you alright and I think that's all of us <laughs> I'm just kidding. Broccoli, <laughs> take it away. All right. So, my attraction is going to take place after the events of the film. Uh, I watched the film recently, and what struck me was the bold creative choice to have the woman who wanted to kidnap and skin puppies face literally no repercussions at the end of the film except her car breaks down um so i was thinking let's see what would cruella do after the film as we know roger and anita plan to start a dalmatian plantation so i think cruella would take inspiration from that 
so what I'm pitching is a Hell Hall restaurant. Hell Hall, of course, the ancestral home of the DeVille family. I think she would turn Hell Hall into her sort of restaurant slash puppy mill. Uh, she's going to have Dalmatian print chairs and tapestries. Uh, all of the servers are going to be wearing what looks like Dalmatian skin clothing. Uh, all of the dishes on the menu are going to have names that are vague enough to where it's like, is am I eating Dalmatian? Uh, and I think that'll be a really fun time for the family. Holy s***. I, I was really excited about your idea when I saw it on the list, and now I'm not sure. <laughs> I am stunned by you how many things sure, that it t- has slightly, like, in common with like things where I was like, oh, we could have like spots on the walls of my dance club. But like I didn't picture mine sounding horrible. Yours sounds horrible because like I was yeah. I wasn't going to like have like I think the word fur specifically <laughs> being used. Maybe we should just it jump it into the question section. Awful. You're a monster. <laughs> I think I specifically <laughs> used the word skin. <laughs> I was, What's up, Eric? At one point, I was going to comment uh, before we even did this that my my pitch involves some level of altruism so that there's no way Brock was going to vote for it. And <laughs> this, his idea, his pitch just to- said that for me. I don't even... <laughs> what <laughs> I like altruism. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the Q and A section. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. Um, my first question is for Eric. So, are they putting up an overlay of the entire park at every night at close? Because <laughs> you said it happens during the extra no, magic you hours. Would still be able to like people who were. Uh, coming to the parks during the day could still do the the hunt for the Dalmatians. It just they wouldn't be getting the same like level of rewards as the kids coming in. Oh, okay. So it's it's an overlay. It's like a quote unquote permanent overlay for a time, yeah. but the kids just come in during the extra magic hours. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the part that specifically thing. That makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot of work. Yeah, that's why I was very confused. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, Brock, mm-hmm. a lot of great ideas in your restaurant. I'll be where accepting are you no questions. This going? <laughs> um, where am I? I'm picturing it going to. Uh, I, guess, I think it would be good. That's actually hard. Uh, I think it might be good in Fantasyland or uh, no, not Fantasyland. Sorry, in Di- how about Animal Kingdom, Brock? Yeah, I think it, it'd be good in Animal Kingdom. There we go. Kingdom. So <laughs> Animal I Kingdom's can't perfect. Vote for it in good conscience anymore, <laughs> because that was the obvious low hanging fruit joke that you breezed right past. I did breeze right past it. That's my bad. <laughs> but there's no part of my pitch that's a joke. Of course, I have a question for Tanner. Yes, sir. Um, how do you plan on reinstating all of Pleasure Island? Oh no, <laughs> this Disney was, Springs now is? This is just what I want as a throwback to the Pleasure Island days is a new dance club. So you're saying that this would just go in yeah, Disney Springs. Yeah, it would go Springs. in Disney Springs. As oh, but okay. I want it to be a throwback a, to the old like wackiness. Okay, no. I thought you were literally saying like if Pleasure Island was still a thing. I also okay. thought that that was right, my gotcha. question as well. I that's, wish that's with clear. all my heart. <laughs> We should put it in our Toontown Resort as the uh, as the nightclub. <laughs> Does Cruella have anything to do with Toontown? No, no. She'll skin but that's the characters there, though. That's for damn sure. It's provocative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certainly no, feeling not. provoked. Yeah, so this is just my throwback to that old, like, just like weird Disney style of like okay. what downtown disney was and like parts of it still are but not all of it anymore <laughs> i gotcha so are you thinking it would just be dancing or or would there be like a restaurant involved that's something or? i wanted to talk about i was open to having a restaurant involved i think that'd probably give us more content uh, okay. to talk about so that's something i'd like to discuss what we think should be there gotcha um and then 
I, a question for Brock. Uh, what kind of food did you have in mind at your restaurant? I was thinking lots of uh, exotic meats. Not exotic, but, you know, not your pork, not your beef. You know, more like... So, like, elephant and shark no, and I, I, I guess exotic is incorrect. Animals. But, you know, lamb, that sort of thing that the American public might not be quite as familiar with. So they aren't 100% sure what it is I that they're lamb. eating. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Gator meat? Could be. Doesn't all have to be meat. I had cactus when I was in Mexico. That well, was but not, he but doesn't want cactus because you can't mistake that for being a puppy. Oh, that's yeah. true. You could cut it into the shape of a puppy. That's you fun. You could say Pongo's nose. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, like beef tongue? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah ground there you tongue. Go. Uh, that sort of thing. Okay. Great. So, Eric, I can't remember if you specified, was there any sort of prize for finding all of the puppies or anything like that? Yeah, it would be scholarships. Okay. Not, not like, not like, we're not talking like to call, like you can pay for college. We're talking like a thousand dollars, seven fifty, and that'd be spread amongst the group of people that found it. Okay. We're oh, okay. Not, we're not gotcha. talking, you get free and college. Because I was going to say, that would turn George. into the Hunger Games <laughs> real quick. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> ideally, they all get these like small scholarships, and they're mostly just showing up to have fun. Um, but no, you, know. you said you wanted them to earn it. You said that these <laughs> yeah. underprivileged they kids need to had pull it too themselves easy. up by the bootstraps. <laughs> yeah, they really just need to just get. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay, Eric. You you just rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It's his voice issues that are making him not want to talk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jake. Yeah. So tell me more about uh, what are you picturing us riding in? I don't know if I missed that in your. I did not specify the ride vehicle um, because I was thinking that could be something we discuss. Uh, it's hard because I was, it might be cool to have like an old timey looking car. Cause like Jasper and Horace have that old delivery van they drive around and Carilla has that awesome car that she drives around in. Um, it's like a, supposed to be similar to a Bugatti or something. Um, or it's a Mercedes. called the Panther DeVille when I looked it up everywhere. Uh, but I don't know that a car works for the whole story because I'd like to go into the dairy farm and see the big cows above us. Cause I'm thinking maybe we're the size of the small animals, the puppies and the cats and everything. So I don't know, maybe we're traveling. Maybe it's, it doesn't have to be a vehicle that looks like a vehicle. Like in Ratatouille, you're riding around in a big mouse or rat. Sorry. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, and mouse it till you're riding around on a big mouse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's something we can discuss uh, if we vote on that pitch. My question for Jake was, what is the tone of the ride? Because the part of the film you described is kind of harrowing. Uh, yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, and that's like the, the entire second half of the film is pretty pretty dark, dark and upsetting yeah <laughs> um so it's, yeah i mean i honestly would be okay with it being a little dark kind of like snow white scary adventures used to be even though i know they got rid of that i would be fine with it being yeah, dark say, but that also it would be well. okay to if we <laughs> toned it down and made it a little bit more cartoony but you know i i, I would prefer having it dark okay but i'm i'm fine with either way good to know good to know that was one of my biggest issues coming up for a pitch for this episode is so much of the focus of this movie movie is so grim (laughs) yeah it's just like puppies almost dying the entire movie (laughs) yeah and then they're like out in the cold. And yeah. Although I thought it would be fun to maybe at one point in the ride actually go through like the blizzard and have like the cold and the snow blowing on you as you go through and like the really windy, just like to play with the effects. And You're stuff. right. That does sound like a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your bullshit idea you came up with. <laughs> How dare you, sir? All right. So. Are we ready to vote? (laughs) I think I could vote. Yeah. Don't sound confident, Jake. Do you have any more questions? (laughs) No. (laughs) All right. All right. Brock, 
you're up first. I am going to vote for an idea that I think is very unique and something we haven't talked about before, really. I really like the idea of Tanner's Nightclub. Thanks, buddy. All right, I guess that is up to me. I am going to vote for Jake's Dark Ride. I like the uh, problem-solving level of that one of, like, how do we make a fun ride out of such a scary scene but still keep the harrowing aspects of it, whereas, like, Brock's is too hard to (laughs) fix. Yeah. (laughs) And I love Eric's idea. I just don't think I'd have as much to add to that one specifically with, like, how the hunt would work. Although that's something that I would like to come back to in the future as an idea, because that is yeah very unique. Yeah. All right. So, Jake, my boy. So, actually, I really liked Eric's idea, um, and I think I'm going to vote for it. I, I don't know necessarily about the whole scholarship thing. I mean, that's cool, but I, I really like the idea of finding the puppies and everything um, and going on a hunt, and I think it would be kind of fun to talk about the different ways that could work. I don't know about the idea so of helping people. But. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about helping the underprivileged youth. I wanted to see Eric's, I wanted to see Eric's face when I said that. <laughs> it was full of disappointment. <laughs> All right, and that leaves yeah, but it I'm to voting Eric for Eric's Hand, puppy hunt. The man, the myth, the legend. Um, wow. Uh, under normal circumstances, I would explain my thought process, but ow, so Cruella's. Okay, I think I can explain Eric's thought process a little bit on that one. He texted me, Tanner, you are such a fucking genius. Every day your creative ideas astound me more. I can't wait to talk about Cruella's nightclub. I just wish someday I can grow up to be like you. (laughs) Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. All right. You're welcome. That will be my last contribution for many minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. Just rest your voice, pal. (laughs) All right, Tanner. This is the part where you say, congratulations, Tanner. <laughs> we never no, did. I said, all right, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> I think you misheard. I just said, all right. <laughs> I will choose to add an exclamation point to the end of that when I remember this memory. <laughs> all right, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into this idea. <laughs> so obviously we're talking it's going to be a... Uh, uh, I, I think uh, Disney Springs, downtown Disney, are good spaces for Cruella's, unless anyone has an idea where they're like, no, it needs to be here in the park somewhere. No, I mean, if it's going to be a dance club, yeah. I think downtown Disney or Disney Springs either. I mean, if they ever the did for make it. that Villains Park that has been mentioned a couple times throughout Disney's history, I think it would fit there perfectly. But yeah, in the meantime, yeah. Disney Springs. Cool. Bringing it back. All right, so like I said, my idea was kind of this is going to be like to answer Brock's question of what does Cruella do after the movie where she faces no repercussions for trying to murder puppies. In this world, yeah. I guess Cruella opens a dance club. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, that would be going from the 50s to the 60s, like early 70s. Yeah, that, that yeah. checks. That checks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I was thinking... That kind of, I want the building to, I want it to look very, like, creepy yet glamorous from the outside. I, I, I originally had, like, the idea of incorporating, like, some 1950s art styles into it. Uh, like I said. Are you thinking it could look kind of like Hell Hall, maybe? I want it to... Let me pull up a picture and see real quick because it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Once you guys started mentioning it, I did think about it. Ooh, yeah, I actually really love that idea for it. Yeah, I, I think mm-hmm. Hell Hall would be cool for it. I, I think I agree. As a setting. Yeah, and that's something that fits the movie. Which is, I, I was super excited about Brock's idea when I saw it on the list because I think Hell Hall is awesome. <laughs> and then he just turned it into that mess <laughs> uh 
<laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be fully honest here. I had no ideas at all. <laughs> so. I would have voted for you if you didn't intentionally make it bad. <laughs> I, I genuinely didn't think it could be good. <laughs> well, then you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we have the building look like Hell Hall, and then that's where I'm kind of picturing her, like, iconic car, a recreation of that outside. So that's something that even if, like, families and stuff during the day that's a good photo op while you're in like disney springs downtown disney yeah. to have just there that's added yeah. value to the area already uh for people going i just had this thought too it might be really cool if uh, at halloween they did like a big halloween party there you know just because it's kind of like a villain place in disney springs or downtown disney they don't really have disney uh, villain stuff in mm-hmm. those places you yeah, know, other than really that one like that candy lot. shop that's called like the Poison Apple or whatever it's called. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be neat. Yeah, no, I think that would be super sick. And like I said, I'm picturing all of the uh, employees there would be very like decked out in Cruella's idea of like ideal fashion style. I want yeah. like. And then, like, I do think the idea of, like, the having them wear wigs of, like, the white and black hair and just various different styles would be a fun little addition of, like, yeah, to work here, you have to <laughs> blend yeah, in. Absolutely. And I think it'd be cool if they all had the hair and then they were wearing, you know, shirts or something that looked like they had the, the white with the black spots or, yeah, yeah you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. And it's real Dalmatian fur. <laughs> yeah yeah of course 100 percent. so one thing tanner i know you said you hadn't seen the movie in a while but in hell hall because it's like abandoned all the furniture is like covered by sheets and stuff do you want it to kind of have a vibe like that still or do you want it to be like she fixed the place up because i think either could be interesting yeah that's interesting i hadn't thought of that before uh, my thought was it's going to be fixed up was where okay. I was going to go originally because I want, like, okay. all of these portraits yeah. of her and stuff. But if anyone sees the value in keeping it, that would be very mannequins-esque, it feels like, to just keep all the furniture covered. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the more I think about it, maybe, like, when you're walking in, like, there's the entryway into it is more, like, covered up and then, like, the club itself, once you enter that, it's almost like a speakeasy where it's hidden a bit. And then that's where cool. the glamour still is. And that's where the party is. Almost like you're being transported back in time to a, a time when this wasn't a shitty place. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's a good idea. Cool. Kind of like Thank a big you. ballroom that <laughs> might exist in Hell Hall. Yeah. And then you get that. Uh, you as get a that real really throwback cool... to mannequins, will the ballroom have a spinning floor? <laughs> <laughs> just a rotating giant rotating like you're on a big record because that's how mannequins was for anybody who is not a man mannequins, mannequins a had a place. rotating dance floor <laughs> you know just not. like a mannequin factory would have <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but i think that's great with the giant ballroom and stuff and that's where that all is yeah, and that's where your music can be set up, and then you have those big pictures of like Cruella, like speeding. <laughs> that's something evil, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just <laughs> portraits everywhere. It'd be interesting too if maybe because it's Hell Hall, which is they never go into the details of it, which is unfortunate because Hell Hall is one of the most fascinating things in the movie to me. But it, they do say it's the old Deville place. Mm-hmm. So I like to think maybe there'd be a lot of portraits of DeVille family through the years. So maybe we see a lot of her ancestors and other relatives. And yeah. I would love if they all looked like so much like her, like almost like it's just yeah. her in different wigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much like all of the but, and we can see them like all be yeah. terrible through the ages and just see like why she is the way she is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think love that might that. be cool. And like I'm all thinking- of them are wearing different animal skins. Like one's in a crocodile suit, <laughs> and the other's in all leopard print. <laughs> one of them's wearing Mickey's pants. Oh wait, no, that wouldn't. Be. There's twins that are wearing both the fox and the hen. <laughs> 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 
He doesn't say much, but when he does, it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So just all of these horrible ancestors that are, have just been like horrible to animals for years. And I think there's a way to do it comedically. Yeah. You oh, know. yeah. Well, like, obviously, if, if you think about a lot of the stuff on Haunted mm-hmm. Mansion out of the context of Disney, it's pretty fucking horrible. Yeah. Like axe murders and all of that stuff, drowning. Mm-hmm. But they make it funny and lighthearted. And you're like, oh, haha, this is fine. So I think along those kind of lines would be perfect yeah. for this. Yeah, I think that's great. So what else had you envisioned? Well, now I'm picturing this whole ballroom, which is kind of like a new thing. I think still, though, we are going to want like a giant disco ball so at it can be like kind of dark and like flashing lights could could there be a big chandelier in the ballroom that doubles as like a disco ball yes the big fancy chandelier spins we keep all the old like art deco art nouveau like whatever era it was that hell hall was supposedly built we keep all that really interesting old architecture Mm -hmm. that this kind of this would probably be in the 60s this like 60s club aesthetic has been pasted onto (laughs) uh and built around so you get a really fun mixture yeah, I love that. Especially like, yeah, that chandelier just with a disco ball attached to it. I think that's really interesting visually as we're doing. And then I know Jake had mentioned at one point if we wanted to do a restaurant, is that something we think is necessary here or do we want to just keep it to the club itself? I mean, I don't I, I don't relate to the club going crowd yeah. myself. That's not something I've ever had an interest in. But so to me, if I went somewhere that had a dance floor, I wouldn't be going if it was just a dance mm-hmm. floor. Like me, I want another reason to go there. But I don't know if other people feel the same way about that. Depends on the music. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. I think I think for the sake of the podcast, let's do an idea where like maybe during the day there is the other side of the room is more of a restaurant style area. Like during regular, yeah. like your hours before you would go clubbing. <laughs> okay. Which there we, because then also like it is a very like disney space still. So I feel like there are going to be a lot of kids that would want yeah. to be able to go inside. Well, and that maybe not you- necessarily a restaurant, but what if there was like a bar and they also had like finger foods? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like hors d'oeuvres and stuff. Yeah. Maybe that's all you need. Stuff like that in there. So kids and stuff, there's times where everyone can go in and see it. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little bit lower key. And then at night, you're not getting as much of the theming, probably, if you're going into the club aspect of it. But that's okay because that's what you're there for at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, in the movie, so Sergeant Tibbs, the cat, sneaks in to find the puppies. It mm-hmm. might be fun if we had a little animatronic of him, like, up in the rafters or something that just kind of pops out every now and then, and you see it, like, he's just kind of checking in to see what's going on. Yeah, I like, it might be fun. I like that idea. a little idea. detail. Uh, incorporating animatronics into it is very fun. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> We could have an animatronic of Jasper chasing the guests around with the fire poker. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something. And threatening to knock their block off. <laughs> Can we bring back Jessica Rabbit, but in like a black and white outfit as like a lounge performer there? See, that was a, that was a choice made not with his head, <laughs> but with his <laughs> horniness. Because <laughs> it doesn't do make think- sense. <laughs> I do think, though, it would be very cool if, like, maybe, like, either the opening or the last uh, song of the night is some, like, altered, more clubby version of uh, Cruella de Vil. Cruella yeah. de Vil. Yeah, I think that I would think be cool. I think would be just, like, a fun, like... Like a remix version of it. Opening version, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about that hit, We'll Have a Dalmatian Plantation? Should we play that we'll one? We'll Have a Dalmatian Plantation. No, <laughs> I think we're going to pass on that. Oh, <laughs> we'll okay. send that down the road. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the issue, though, of uh, coming up with a club idea and having some of the least clubby people in the world <laughs> talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I don't really have much more to add. I don't, to yeah. I don't have a ton to add about the function of how a club would work. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's usually about like two feet long, <laughs> wooden. Uh, you bash people with it. Is that correct? Do I have the correct way of thinking here? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. I'm curious right. if the listeners at home could hear my eyes roll. <laughs> the second Brock opened his mouth. Well, if they if they didn't hear it, they certainly felt it. <laughs> but yeah, I want to uh, have. I think just like the color palette, I think our floor is black and white. Uh, like I said, I think incorporating the spots into some of the design elements in a way that like Brock joked about in his with some of the furniture, I think would be fun to have actually done in like a tongue-in-cheek way yeah and very cartoony yeah and i mean like remember in in hercules there's that great little cameo from scar where he's wearing scar mm-hmm. and while he's getting his portrait painted and he's wearing scars uh fur or, or whatever <laughs> that cameo. just like maybe have scar like hanging on the wall you yeah. know <laughs> like something like that <laughs> he's a bad guy people won't care <laughs> no so i think that'd be very fun i think it'd be a cool themed experience for people to go into and then yeah i love the idea of this halloween party though a little bit like you could even yeah uh, add some extra scares and stuff to the outside and inside of the Mm. uh place itself like decorate that a little bit and then that would be a very cool themed thing yeah you could (laughs) Change the menu so Sweet. it's all Halloween themed. Add some skeletons yeah. in there. <laughs> some puppy skeletons. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> now we can do a tie in with spooky buddies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need. That's my favorite. We're going to kill a dog movie. Yeah. <laughs> About all the movies where we have to kill dogs. That's, uh, that's definitely on that's the list. That's the best. <laughs> it's way better than Old Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> There's a section in like a library room that's all of Corella's favorite books. <laughs> it's just like old yeller where the red fern gro- goes. The dogs that grows that the dogs die in that too, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's just all shit where like dogs are dying, animals suffer. <laughs> I think just like little gags like that would be fun to have yeah. all around. Yeah. Yeah, just fun little yeah. animal suffering all those gags. Dead dog gags. Yeah. Uh, That's the kind of gags I look for when I go to Disney. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you're going to a place like Cruella's, that I think that's what you want. It's well, expected. If I'm going to a place yeah. called Cruella's, I'm bringing like a BDSM gag. Oh, that's the yeah, gag really? I'm bringing. Oh no! You know what? He's not wrong. But that would be like a leash in a, a leash in a collar, right, <laughs> yeah. Eric? Because I know you have that studded one you wear sometimes. Yeah. So you're thinking that one, or would you bring your black and white one? <laughs> yeah, but I don't like. I don't. I don't usually bring out like my full puppy outfit. Right. Yeah. It's like the leather I gloves hate this. and the leash. I got gotcha. you. Well, I that would be kind of hot in the parks. Yeah. I hate Ooh. this. You know. I hate this. And I can just imagine because, like, when I was tugging on this. your leash before, you were like I straining pretty hard, and I think this. you'd be chafing yeah, if we were in the Florida heat. I, was, I was gonna say. So I know much. we said laryngitis earlier, but in actuality. <laughs> 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 Eric just had an issue with his leash. Mm, I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. I hate it because I was just waiting to I, I make this. a joke about Eric's voice, <laughs> and then Jake beat me to it. <laughs> I, hate I hate this. So when Brock's done hating this, is there anything else you'd like to add to your club, Tanner, or do you feel like this idea is developed enough? I think it's pretty well developed. I think there's a cool outside to it. Uh, we fit the yeah. theme very well. We I feel like we went into enough detail on what it would look like between the portraits of evil <laughs> Devils. <Right. laughs> uh, I don't want to. I don't think people want to hear us go through a uh, drink menu. Just describing <laughs> and like uh, what yeah. what song we'll play and what thing but i think like having like the (laughs) cruella deville like opening number song is something cool 
Mm-hmm. It'd be cool if it opened up the dancing, and it might also be cool if it was the big finale yeah. every night. You know, with like special lights mm-hmm. and stuff. Both times. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for going on this journey with me. Thank you for taking us <laughs> Thanks along. Thanks for having us. <laughs> that was awesome. So now that we have a nightclub, I think it's time for the lightning round. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think. lightning round. Lightning round. <laughs> All right, let's spin that wheel. Spinning. It's spinning. It's spinning. Okay. Today, <laughs> we are doing a re-theme of a classic of Disney parks. We're doing a re-theme of Rock and Roller Coaster. And we are theming it to <laughs> to one of the greatest Disney films, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> We're re-theming Rock and Roller Coaster to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Who do we have first today? All right, let me pull out my pyramidal structure real quick. <laughs> first up is Brock. All right, we are going on a crazy rock and roll feud journey through the dwarves' minds. Uh, as we know, Rock and Roller Coaster uses a lot of really cool lights and black light effects, so I think it'd be really cool to see all of the jewels and the gems uh, as we fly through the mines. And we see the uh, the dwarves uh, with animatronics singing rock and roll versions of Whistle While You Work. <laughs> um, uh, and so, uh, and hi ho, you know. Uh, so we'll be going through that ride, and I think it'll be a lot of fun i mean they do all have zz top beards there you go you're not that far off except for dopey dopey's more like phil collins (laughs) (laughs) i guess you're right right. he's bald (laughs) i am up next so for this retheme of rock and roller coaster, we are going to be racing through the trees from that terrifying scene. We're going to be keeping the darkness and the neon lights as we're zipping through. We're racing through all of these spooky, creepy trees on a thrilling, scary adventure. It fits a little bit more than being in the mind of a dwarf <laughs> because it's something from the actual <laughs> fucking movie. Uh, and it's terrifying, which also fits the Wait. entire history of <laughs> Snow White Ride. <laughs> He didn't say mind. He said a mine. M I N E. Oh, like, yeah. you mind? I thought it was great. I was, I was like, like, what I thought you reacted like that. Well, I was like, what are you pitching, bro? I thought he was going to pitch a mine. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it did sound a little like he said mind, but I figured out what it meant as he went on. <laughs> I was like stunned that Brock wasted the going first. <laughs> all right eric you are nice up. okay uh my pitch is uh, uh dopey has started his own band dopey and the, the dopettes uh and you are following them along their uh uh, humble beginnings to their rockin' uh, arena anthem uh, ends. That's, that's mine. <laughs> oh, all right. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dopey so, and the dope so we're not. So that's a light rethink, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's more of a reskin than it is a rethink. All right. <laughs> all right, Jake. All right, so that leaves me, right? Okay. So we're going to retheme the alley where you're boarding into the uh, roller coaster, and instead it's going to be the Evil Queen's laboratory, and you're going to drink some of her potion and then get onto the roller coaster, and the roller coaster experience is the experience of being transformed into a horrible hag, and that's what she, (laughs) the feeling she felt as she was being morphed, and you're hearing all the music playing while you're essentially on an acid trip, and at the end there's a big mirror where you look at yourself and you look like a hag, and that's the ride. <laughs> Excellent. So it's my Dumbo pitch. I mean, my Pinocchio pitch, but it's. <laughs> but better. <laughs> but, but better. I have another one if you want me. I can do another one if you don't want me to use that no, one. No, no, that's your pitch. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> you, you don't get a second chance. No one does. <laughs> my other one is at the end when Snow White and the Prince ride off into the sunset. <laughs> 
<laughs> you get on your horse, and then you hear three, two, one, <laughs> and then they take off toward the castle. <laughs> yeah, that's a better pitch, but you, uh, that's not the pitch we're voting on. <laughs> All right, well then, if you're so smart, why don't you take us the fuck out of here, and it better be good. Uh, I think you mean, why don't you take us the heck out of here? Golly, (laughs) you and your language, sir. Yeah, can we substitute uh, Hell Hall with Heck Hall for the entirety of the podcast? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Really? But then it doesn't have the double L, Mac, so we would have to make it Heck Hack. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's the world brock wants to live in people oh jeez okay (laughs) um oh oh no that dalmatian is chewing on something jake i think it's our facebook get that out of its mouth facebook.com slash main street musings and oh my god tanner that Dalmatian, it's raising its leg right over our <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, dog, don't pee on our Instagram, main underscore street underscore musings, or I'm going to send you to Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric, that dog is getting a little bit amorous with our Instagram. <laughs> I mean, our Twitter. Every time, it's our Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> at msm podcast thank you eric and i'm Brock. <laughs> underscore msm underscore podcast is our twitter I'm sorry eric <laughs> I just didn't want to make you speak. <laughs> and i'm brock everyone make sure to give us a five star review or a 101 star review if you can hey. tell all of your friends and rate us kindly Hooray! We'll be so sad when this doesn't happen. Something along those lines. (laughs) See, and we won't get a copyright strike because you can't tell what song he's singing. (laughs) Oh, and for the record, I just want to let you guys know, since Eric didn't fill his in in the chart, I put it in as Poor Kids Hunt Puppies. (laughs) 